bright duty every student matters hello dear students welcome to another lecture in today's class we are going to begin with the first poetry of class 10 alternative english which is to sleep now this is a poem which is written by william wordsworth we all know that william wordsworth is a very famous poet and he uh in every poem that you must have read uh, you know of william wordsworth there is one theme that he particularly focuses on and that theme is nature so he loves nature he loves to bring out the beauty of this nature in every poetry of his and in this poem also he has managed to correlate sleep with the nature now how does he do that that is an art in itself so in this poem he has personified sleep um, you know he has treated sleep to be a living thing and he is requesting sleep to come to him because he has not slept for two days and he wishes to sleep peacefully today the day when he writes this poetry and he is also told the sleep of all uh, you know the tricks that he has used be it counting the sheep or listening to the beautiful sounds of nature the birds and everything but to you know but it was in vain and he had not slept for two days and he just wanted to sleep tonight he also told sleep to come to him because according to him sleep was uh, something that marks the beginning of a new day if you sleep well at night if you sleep peacefully at night then you start your day afresh and therefore the value of sleeping peacefully has also been talked about in this poem so this is a very short uh, simple yet a very william wordsworth poem in which he has talked and emphasized on the beauty of nature yet again so let us begin with the poem first about the author about this poet william wordsworth so he was a significant poet of the romantic movement in the english poetry He was born among the beautiful lakes and mountains of the Lake District in northwest England. He wrote poetry about the English countryside and some of his poems are immortal records of the fascination he had for nature. As I told you, a few of his poems have only and only talked about the beauty of nature. and its impact on the soul and the kind of effect it has on the reader he revolutionized uh, the content and style of poetry and used the simple language of common and this is the most distinct characteristic about william wordsworth poems he uses very simple words he uses a simple language so that it can reach out to the masses so this is why his poems are so much sought after and they are so famous so let us begin reading this poem to sleep so a flock of sheep that leisurely pass by one after one the sound of rain and bees murmuring the fall of rivers winds and seas smooth fields white sheets of paper and pure sky so as you can see in the first stanza itself he is emphasized on he is you know he has beautified i think almost every aspect of nature be it the flock of sheep or the rain or the bees the river the sea the water the sky so every aspect of nature has been touched upon by him so he says that a flock of sheep that leisurely pass by leisurely 
you know, in a fun way. We have usually seen the flocks of sheep passing by on the road and they walk they pass, they, you know, just keep on strolling for no purpose at all. So, leisurely, when you do it out of fun, with no particular aim in your mind. So, he saw or he had imagined. Now, all these things that we are going to read about in the first stanza are those things that he imagined believing and hoping that he would be able to fall asleep. So, he imagined a flock of sheep that was passing by very leisurely with leisure, one after the other. So, one after the other, they were not walking in, you know, groups of two or three for that matter. So, one after the other, he saw a flock of sheep moving, the, uh, you know, after each other. The sound of rain and bees murmuring. So he had even imagined that he could hear the beautiful sound of rain, the beautiful sound of the bees. And murmuring, we all know, is a very, you know, low sound for something, whispering, murmuring. So this is again something that we people usually enjoy, the sound of the rain falling on probably the roof, the sound of the bees, it connects you to the nature. So he had imagined listening to the sound of the rain, of the bees, the fall of the river. He even imagined the sound that a falling river produces, the sound of the winds, which is very hard to actually listen to, but if you are a nature lover, then you even enjoy the sound of the wind blowing and seas. Smooth fields, so smooth fields means the fields which are green. As far as your eyes can take you, you just see green fields. White sheets of water, so white sheets of water means pure, immaculately clean water. And a pure sky. So these are all the things that he had imagined. And just after reading these things, you can very well see that this poet was indeed a nature-loving poet. Because these minute sounds, the sound of wind, the sound of river, the sound of seas, these sounds can only be enjoyed by somebody who loves. I've thought of all by turns, and still I lie sleepless, and soon the small bird's melodies must hear, first uttered from my awkward trees, and the first cuckoo's melancholy cry. So, he said that I've thought of all by turns. All, what does this all refer to? The things that we've read in the first time. So, all these things he had imagined in turn, one after the other. So, he first imagined a flock of sheep moving behind one another. Then he imagined that he could hear the sound of the rain, bees, river, wind, seas. And one after the other, he imagined all the apers uh, said things. And still, I lie sleepless. And he said that even after that, I am not able to sleep. I am still sleepless. I do not, uh, you know, feel sleepy at all. And soon the small bird's melodies must hear. First uttered from my awkward trees and the first cuckoo's melancholy cry. And soon means he was talking to the sleep and he was telling the sleep that if you don't come to me, that is, if I am not able to fall asleep tonight also, very soon the morning time will come. Very soon, uh, you know, it will be the dawn. I hope you all understand. Dawn, the early morning before the sun rises. So he said, very soon will be the time. When I would be able to hear the melodious, the beautiful sound of the birds chirping. Where? 
from my awkward trees. He had an awkward, he had a huge field which had trees grown in it. So, he could hear the sounds. He was telling the sleep that if you don't come to me early, then I would be able to hear the sounds of the birds who will wake up to a new day. Not only will I be able to hear the chirping birds, but also the cuckoo. Cuckoo also we know is a kind of bird and melancholy means something which is a little sad. So, he said that even when the cuckoo is going to wake up in the morning, he also, or you know, the cuckoo bird is also going to give a melancholous cry. The cuckoo is going to produce a sound which he thought was a little melancholy. And he said, so I will not be able to sleep today also. And very soon, the morning time will come. Once it is morning, I will be able to hear the sound of the birds chirping. From where? From my orchid trees, from the trees that are there in my orchid. And not only the birds, I will also be able to hear the melancholous cry, the sad and the depressive sound of the cuckoo bird. Even thus last night and two nights more I lay, and I could not win thee sleep. By any still, do so, do not let me veer tonight away. So he was again talking to the sleep. As I have told you at the beginning only, one poetic device that has been used in this poem throughout is personification. The poet has personified sleep. He is talking to sleep. So he said that last night and two nights more I lay. So, last night also, he was not able to sleep. And other than that, two nights more, I lay and could not win thee. I lay, I was just lying on the bed and could not win you. Means, I could not sleep. Winning over the sleep means bringing the sleep to you. Being able to sleep peacefully, but he was not able to do that. So he said that last night and there were two other nights that I just could not sleep and was simply lying on my bed. Sleep by any stealth. Stealth means any sort of smartness. What smartness? He is basically talking about the tricks that he used, that he mentions in the first stanza. Whatever things he tried to imagine, whatever sounds he tried to you know, imagine in his mind, these were all the tricks, these were all the tactics that the poet had actually tried to adopt so that he would be able to win over sleep, so that he would be able to fall asleep. But he said that whatever I did was in vain. It was totally useless. Because I have not been able to win you despite being so smart, despite being so cunning. So do not let me veer tonight away. Veer away is one word. Veer away means to waste something. So he was requesting the sleep that please come to me. Please allow me to sleep well tonight so that my night is not wasted. Without thee, what is all the morning's wealth? Come, blessed barrier between day and day, dear mother of fresh thoughts and joyous heart. So, thee, now thee is the old English word for you. So, he was again talking to sleep and he said that without you, what is the value of morning? If you are not able to sleep well at night, you are not going to value the morning. You are not going to wake up fresh. It is only when we are waking up fresh and happy are we in a position to start a day with utmost dedication and creativity and positivity. But this is something that we all have experienced. If we are not able to sleep well at, at night, the entire morning, you know, it seems to be very lazy, very lethargic, boring. So he was telling the sleep 
that without you there is no value of mourning come blessed barrier between day and day so blessed barrier barrier we all know something which causes as an obstacle something which acts as a you know a middle path between two things so this sleep we all know is something that separates one day from the other day we sleep at night marking the close marking the end of one day and when we uh, wake up in the morning that is the beginning of a new day so sleep is something which connects the two days together dear mother of fresh thoughts and joyous hair and as i told you it is only because of a peaceful sleep that we are waking up fresh we are waking up with good thoughts and a good health as well with sleep comes your health so if we are sleeping well we are waking up fresh in the morning we obviously feel healthy so my dear students what did we learn the first stanza as i told you emphasized upon the beautiful things of nature that the poet had imagined one night when he was not able to sleep he imagined a flock of sheep that was walking one behind the other he imagined the beautiful sound of the rain and the bees he actually imagined the sound of the falling uh, rivers wind seas he saw smooth and green fields white you know pure and clean water and a pure sky all these things he thought of one after the other in turns and why did he do because he wanted to fall asleep as he had not slept for two previous nights but he was also telling the sleep that if you are not going to come to me tonight then obviously very soon a new day will begin the very soon there will be the you know the uh, arrival the advent of the morning and i will start listening to the chirping of the birds from my trees in the orchard i will be able to listen to the cuckoo's cry so he requested the sleep to come to him he also remarked that although he has tried all the cunning ways he has tried all the tricks so that the uh, sleep would come to him but he has failed and he requested the sleep to come so that his night that night also is not wasted at the end in the last stanza he tells us the readers about the importance of being able to sleep peacefully at night he tells us that we are you know we know how important the morning is only when we sleep well at night because it is only after a good night's sleep that we have fresh thoughts we have a fresh and creative mind and heart uh, our health in also so my dear students this was a very beautiful poem written by william wordsworth and as i told you the poetic device that has been used here is personification okay